Hi, Dudu here. Let's have a look at Doom or Doomy. Okay, uh, we have to decide how to pronounce this. Um, so in French, it's Doom. Let's say Doom in English. <laughs> Okay, so I want to show you this uh, new media encoder and what's uh, very nice about it, I think, and why I developed it very quickly. First thing first, uh, let's start this encoder uh, just by clicking on the .exe file. And here you can see the first thing I love with it is how fast it is to launch, uh, for example, compared to Adobe Media Encoder. Yeah. Hoop. Here it is. Okay, so the, the first thing I want to show you is the formats uh, supported. Um, Doom is based on FFmpeg, and FFmpeg has a lot of video formats. So if you just have a look here at all the available formats, these are file formats you can choose. And then for each file format, for example, MP4, you can just here set the video codec to have a look at all the codecs available. So you have uh, a animated P PNG, we talk about that, it's very useful. You have all this AVD and XH HD uh, stuff. You have DPX, uh, you have, of course, H264 and 265, uh, a lot of stuff like this. Of course, you have uh, image formats like JPEG or PNG. Um, I think almost all the formats I know of are in this list, so uh, you, you can do pretty much anything with this. Um, let me just show you very quickly and let's use uh, media. So I have just like this, this video I made specifically for testing Doom and checking the, um, the colors. So, and there is sound also. I don't record it because it's just uh, an, an ugly tone, <laughs> but there is some sound uh, on this. I just have to drop uh, the, my media file in Doom. When I drop it, I have a few information about the, the media, which is displayed here about the resolution and everything, something quite, um, you know, common for, for all media encoders. And on the right panel, I can configure the outputs. Uh, so again, I have a summary here of all the settings I've chosen. The easiest way to transcode this is to use the presets. Doom comes with a lot of predefined presets, very easy to use. If you need an MP4, you can just select MP4 high quality. Um, and just select this and everything is automatically set. Uh, then you just have to click on encode. And another thing I love is, have you seen how, how quick this is? This is a four second video or six, I, I don't remember. Let's have a look. It says four seconds here and look how quick it is to transcode this four seconds. Uh, let's do it again. Oops. It takes just maybe one second, something like this. And my media, my new media is here. You'll see also that, of course, uh, if you're not satisfied with the presets, if you want to go into more details, you can configure pretty much everything here. Uh, for example, um, you just have to, to click on this list and you have this uh, the things you, you can set, so you can resize the video, you can change the frame rate, of course, you can set the video codec, which doesn't really make sense for an MP4, which has to be in H.264, but uh, if you want to change, you can just select all codecs or lossy, lossless, or iframe codecs, you have these nice filters, and then you can here select any codec. Uh, more interesting is that you can change the video quality and adjust the quality. If you're using uh, H264, uh, uh, you have these settings. You can either set the bitrate, uh, either a constant bitrate or a variable bitrate. But my advice is instead to use either the, the quality setting or even you, you can just uncheck everything and use the default settings. But um, the quality, the quality slider is very nice and it will automatically adjust the bit rates 
for target quality, depending on what is in the media file, actually, if it's uh, video or animation or graphics, um, the, the bitrate will be set automatically according to, to the complexity of the, of the media file. So I just have to set a, a quality here. You have also this very useful um, speed slider. Um, if you have some time and you want a very good quality, just uh, set this to very slow. The encoding will be much slower, but the quality will be much better for the same bitrate, the same target quality. If you set this to very fast uh, or super fast or ultra fast, the quality will be lower, uh, but it will, it will, it's going to be very, very fast to encode if you're in a hurry. Um, and you have these fine tuning settings depending on your video, your media file, if it's a film or animation or if there's drain, you can set this to automatically improve the, the quality of the encoding. So that's very useful. And what's also very, very useful is are these two last settings, the fast decode one. If you're encoding a video for um, maybe a video game or for mobile applications, fast decode is very useful as it will optimize the codec. Uh, so it's quicker to decode to, for the player. Uh, if it's a, a mobile phone, it will be played better. Um, and you have this streaming option, which is very useful for videos which will be streamed like on YouTube or anything. Uh, this will improve the time needed to uh, start actually start the video. It will start quicker when the user begins the streaming. So uh, you can fine tune the, the quality like this. You can also, uh, for more advanced user, uh, change the, the profile and level of the video. Uh, this is useful if you have compatibility issues with some hardware. Um, you can then s set some color management. Again, this is for advanced user if you need to change the color management depending on very specific uh, hardware or players. Um, and you can change also adjust the pixel format. Um, if you have a look at this, you, you have all these standard formats which are filtered to fit the current codec. So all of these are compatible with the codec you're using, but not with all players. Um, so again, um, this is for advanced user. Uh, if you don't know what this is, just let Doom do everything for you and let, let this on the default option. Actually, the way I, I do use Doom is just using these presets and I let it configure everything for me. It's faster and it's very reliable. And you have the, the same kind of options for the audio. Um, one last thing, uh, one last feature about video transcoding, which, is, which can be very useful, is the select and input map streams. Let's use an EXR uh, sequence. Uh, I can just drop one of the frame uh, in Doom. It will detect the sequence, the numbering of the of the files and everything for you. Don't forget to set the frame rate, the input frame rate, as it's a file sequence. Uh, Doom cannot know what was the original frame rate, so don't forget to set it. And let's say you want to add some sound on this sequence. I can just add another input file and drop in there this wave sound, for example. Um, and let's say I want to add a second uh, sound stream taken from a video file. Let's add a third input and pick some MP4 file, which has, some, uh, which has a sound stream. So I have three different inputs. What I can do in my output is here use this select and map input streams block and here I can add a new stream in the input. This way I can just select my input media. Let's say it's the EXR uh, frame sequence, which has just one video stream. So this will be my, my video stream in the output. And if I want to add an audio stream, I can just add a stream, select the WAV file, which of course has just one audio stream. So uh, now I have the EXR file and the audio stream. And I can add a third uh, stream, for example, which will be the audio from the MP4 file. So I select the MP4 file and just select the 
audio stream. This way, my output will have one video stream and two audio streams taken from all these inputs. Um, when Doom will be finished and completely developed, you will have also the ability to select um, time codes, to select uh, subtitles or even metadata to, to map your streams and select what you need into several inputs. And this way, with this very simple um, mapping block, I can just do this and again click on the, the Go button to, to transcode this media and mix all the streams together. Another very useful feature is that Doom will not only transcode media, but is also able to uh, render scenes, especially from After Effects, and it will be available to render scenes from Blender also. Uh, for now, um, in this test version, in this prototype, I can just show you how it works with After Effects. I can just very simply drop an After Effects project into my input uh, tab. Uh, let's just remove these two other inputs. So my input is just one After Effects project, which I can configure just above here, just under here, just below here. Uh, um, Doom cannot yet uh, detect the frame rate of the composition you're going to render. So don't forget to set the frame rate. And here you can choose which comp to render either one item already in the render queue, or you can just set the name of a composition here, composition name. You set the name, the exact name, and Doom will render this comp. And then, let's just remove this mapping stream. Again, you just have to configure the output, how you want the, the, the file to be encoded, and then you click on play, and Doom will render this After Effects project. You don't even have to open After Effects. If you need several output formats, of course, you can add other outputs and configure all of them individually. You can add as many outputs as you wish. So that's it. It's the case when you don't have After Effects open and you just want to render projects. Um, what you can do also is, if you're working in After Effects, Doom comes with a very handy script. Here it is, this Doom script to send the composition from After Effects directly to into Doom. So here my composition is the same uh, media I showed you just before. Uh, so this is my, my colors. Um, actually, I've added a few effects. Uh, so the render uh, is slower. <laughs> to slow down the render, there is unnecessary effects uh, just to, to, to be able to measure how long it takes to, to render a complex project. And with this very simple script, I can, if I need to change the preset which will be used in Doom, or just leave it to the default one. And I just have to select my comp and click on Send Composition to Doom. Uh, After Effects asks if it's okay to save the project to be able to launch it. Just click yes, it is saved. And as you can see, Doom is opened with the project uh, prepared, everything set with, to the right frame rate, to everything, your preset has been selected and you just have to click on this uh, play go button. And this will launch the render process with After Effects and then encode the video. As you can see, the rendering, the After Effects rendering has just started. And here it is. It's a bit slow because, as I said, I just added some unnecessary effects to make it voluntarily slow. So here it's rendering. And you'll see that uh, once this After Effects rendering process has finished, the video will be transcoded, but you won't have time to really clearly see it as it's so fast. Have a look at this. And so this is the render process, the usual render process from After Effects. And here it is, it is starting the encoding process and here it is finished. The video has been rendered and encoded by Zoom in a very, very fast way. And uh, I don't know where the output is. Let's have a look in test medias. Okay, um, it is this file which has just been rendered. As you can see, everything works uh, perfectly. And it is very, very fast. Uh, once the rendering process in After Effects is finished, the encoding is just a matter of, of seconds. Um, 
So here it is. It will work the same way with Blender. Uh, and there will be a render queue and a lot of stuff. But as you can see, as it is today, it's already a very handy tool. Uh, you have, of course, a few settings uh, you can change. Especially, you can select the version of After Effects. Doom detects the, all the, the, the After Effects which are installed on your system. And you can select which one you want to use um, for your rendering process. Um, uh, it's especially useful if you have the beta uh, version installed and you don't want to use it for the rendering process you can select um, the actual current version because by default doom will use the latest one which is the beta versions um, but you may want to change this to use the, the current version instead so uh, that's it i hope you like this tool I, I really think it's a very very useful one um, just um, check the links uh, if you uh, want to know a bit more to check the crowdfunding campaign um, uh, join us contribute so we can finish the developments check the links if you want to see more details about this tool and all the other tools we're going to develop and see you soon for another a preview of another tool thank you very much for your help and your support bye